Hello, and welcome to Sparkling Tuesdays with Sarah Jane Slocum, your finance director for Makers and Artisans, here to give you the exciting conclusion in our four-week mini course of zero basics, uh, zero bookkeeping basics. Um, and this week we're going to cover reports. I hope you all had a fantastic Halloween, Sawain, Day of the Dead, whatever you might have celebrated or are just enjoying the autumn colors. And now we are live in all the places. So let me get the chat up here so I can see if you all have any questions. If you do have any questions as we go along, just pop them in the chat. If you watch this on replay and get some questions, uh, have questions later, just pop them in the comments and I will address them there. Um, right. Okay, so here we are, um, and this is our four-week program that we're going through. We've been through setup and transactions, entering transactions. We've checked our bank balance, th that our bank balances. Uh, we've entered invoices. We've sent reminders. We've looked at how to keep on, tra on top of who owes us what and, and who we owe money to. Um, this week, we're going to talk about reports. So this week is actually a bit of a standalone. If you just need to know about how to read your reports um, in whatever software you're using, you can feel free to just carry on. Um, the other weeks build on each other, and it's very zero-centric. But here we're just going to um, take a moment to see how to get to these in zero, and then we're going to um, actually look at how to read them, which is universal. So uh, which reports are we going to look at? We're going to look at profit and loss report, your cash flow forecast, and at tracking categories. Um, so let's get started with your profit and loss report. Just as a, um, just so you know, I have and carried on entering more invoices and bills since last week so that there's some more meat in these profit in, in these reports that we're looking at so it doesn't follow on exactly or we'd be here all day so let's have a look now it shows up Okay, here we are back in zero. We are in Asylum Jones trading as Asylum's Jack-O-Lanterns account again. And um, uh, profit and loss, right. So to get to the profit and loss report, you click on accounting up here at the top and then profit and loss here towards the middle. So this is a profit and loss report for our jack-o'-lantern business. Um, it defaults to the financial year that we entered when we set up the account in week one. So I, uh, Asylum Jones is a sole trader, so I've entered his financial year as the tax year. That's going to be the case for most of you, I think. Um, if you need to look at it for other periods, if you only want to look at it for this month or last month or this quarter or any of these others, you can uh, feel free to just click the down arrow and it's got some options for you. Or you can just type in whatever uh, dates you're, you're wanting. Now, this is giving it to us. Um, I'll come back to that. 
the top part of a profit and loss report is always about your sales. So we have market sales and we have wholesale sales in, in Asylum's accounts. It could be different for you. You may just have one, uh, but you may also have internet sales or however you want to break it apart. And so we can see that we made £13,929 from market sales where we sold uh, at market stalls and another 2385 from wholesale sales where we sold to a shop that then sold on our, our pumpkins. Um, our cost of sales, uh, so the second chunk is always our cost of sales, our purchases. So purchases is a reserved word in bookkeeping in, in the UK. That means the cost of the stock that you buy specifically to resell. So it's it's not, uh, so for Silum, it's just pumpkins. Um, for anybody else, it's, you know, it, pretty much anybody else. It's not staples. It's not uh, ink for your printer. It's not any of those things are all overheads. It's only the things that you buy to resell. So if you are a woodworker, then it's going to be the wood. Um, but it's not going to be the drill bits and it's not going to be the power saws and table saws and things like that. It's, it's only what actually leaves your workshop. Okay. So, um, the second chunk here is your cost of sales. And the third chunk is your overheads or your administrative costs or your expenses. These words all mean the same thing. You'll see them differently on different, uh, from different uh, software. Uh, the, you subtra the, the report will take your sales and subtract the cost of sales, the purchases, and give you a gross profit figure. Don't get hung up on this. And then it will subtract all of your overheads or administrative costs, as it's called here, and give you an operating profit um, if you've told it about any tax that you need to pay, then tax would actually go here. We haven't told you about any tax yet because we only just started this business. We don't know what kind of tax we need to owe. Um, and then it would subtract the tax and give you your profit after taxation at the bottom. So this is the infamous bottom line that you've heard about. And this tells you, um, how much profit you've actually made. Now on this one, what we can do is we can uh, make a couple of judgments from it. So we've sold, so your sales should always hopefully be more than your purchases. You should always be selling your products for more than you're buying them for. That's just, otherwise you will quickly go out of business. However, it is likely that we have missed some bills from our suppliers because we only have about a thousand pounds of pumpkins that we've bought in the system and we've sold 16,000 pounds of pumpkins. So this is a, a way to check and see if it seems sensible to you. Um, we're also uh, able to see So we've, I've entered in uh, some recurring bills. Um, we've got 150 pounds, here I'll click on it, a month of rent for our storage unit because we have to put all of our pumpkins somewhere. So we've got our, our warehouse storage unit. If you click on any of these figures, it gives you all of the transactions for it. So we have the 150 pounds in October and the 150 pounds in November because they're on the first of the month and both of those have happened already. But be aware that that 300, which is here, that we were just looking at on the profit and loss is not, even though the profit and loss says that it's for the whole tax year, which runs to April, it hasn't included the, the rent for December, January, February, March, and April. Um, so it's only giving you a snapshot to the current day, even though we've told, I've told zero that these are recurring bills and they will keep coming. Uh, because, you know, we could, 
we could give notice on that storage unit now and, and move out and we won't be paying. Uh, we might pay December, but we won't be paying January, February, March or April. So it's that's part of why. Anyway, we just click on back here and go back to the profit and loss. Uh, so this is just a snapshot of where we're at right now. So our overheads or our administrative costs. Here are our, ins our business insurance, our various software. Uh, so if you want to see what that is, we can click into it. Uh, we are paying Google and Canva. We've paid Google twice and Canva once so far. Um, and so on. So you can click into any of them to see what they are. Uh, right now, it looks like we're doing really healthy with our pumpkin business because we're seeing 14 and a half grand in profit. Uh, but as I say, we probably have forgotten to enter some pumpkins that we bought. So that's going to go down. Right. Um, comparison. So that's sales. Let me switch the... Thing again. Right. So that was sales and cost of sales and overhead. So you understand what you're looking at. The other option that pretty much every software will give you is comparison periods. So let's have a look at those. Okay. So we can under here and zero, we click under compare with here at the top. Um, Right now, it's also giving us some options off to the side. This doesn't always appear. So we're just going to go with this because it'll stay here. Um, you can compare with. So the date range is the period. So right now, the period is this financial year. If you compare with one period, then you're comparing this year with last year, the same period. If we hit update, we'll see what we mean. Um, Asylum's just started, so the compare with period here is not useful. Uh, but if we use the current and previous three months over here on this side, you also get, so November is the current month that we're in, and it has just a few transactions in it because, of course, October was Asylum's big, big month. Um, so nearly all of the transactions are here in October. Uh, we did have this one on the 30th of September. There will be some, uh, there should be some others in the run up to October, of course. But um, yeah, so this comparison gives us each month. So the current month, the last three months, and then the year to date. And so if you're, you can, um, you can do it like that. You can do the current financial year by month. So that gives you the whole financial year. It's a very wide one. This can be very useful for you to see how to, how the fluctuations are through the year especially with maker businesses, there will usually be quite a lot more sales in this final quarter this, that we're in right now than there are through the rest of the year. Um, so the monthly figures give you a lot of insight. Um, so what you're looking at here is you're wanting to know how your sales are compared to your costs. You want to know if there's any costs that seem unreasonably high um, and are candidates for reducing if you need to reduce costs uh, or you want to see which ones seem like luxuries if you need to reduce costs so this has so even though we have a couple hundred i think uh, maybe a hundred accounts um categories in this in Silum's accounts this has only given us uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight of those because it's only showing us what we've actually used. So it's really useful to just boil it right down to see 
where we're actually spending and receiving money, so the market and the wholesale. Looking at the breakdown between whatever sales categories you create helps you to know which ones are uh, more um, not profitable because this is just the turnover, but which ones generate more sales and help you to think about, could I increase these wholesale sales? Is there something I could do there? Or should I spend more of my energy on the market sales because that's been a proven winner? Um, that's what you're looking at when you're looking, that's what you're looking for when you're looking at a profit and loss report. Uh, there's also no advertising costs here. So if you have extra money, you can look for where you're not spending money. There's also no training here and think about where's, what would be a good investment that you're not already making. So it could be advertise, paid advertising. It could be networking groups. It could be, um, business clubs, the uh, memberships and things, uh, where you get training. It could be a specific CPD course. Um, So that's the sort of thing that you're looking for. This is, uh, you can, from zero, you can export in pretty much any report as either a PDF or to Excel or to Google Sheets. Um, I, I, I recommend this. If you export it to Google Sheets, it just shows up in your Google Drive with the name of the report. I recommend doing this and then just renaming the name to include the date because it's just going to be a snapshot of what's happened right now and so you'll want some of those as snapshots to refer back to later maybe you'll want some of them uh, to um, see possibly to share with others to share with your bookkeeper or accountant although they should really you should give them zero logins there's no extra charge for it you should just give them zero logins okay so that's the profit and loss report let us have a look at what's next next is the cash flow forecast um zero has a very basic cash flow fo forecast functionality it gives you the sales and bills that zero knows about. So if you are planning a market, you're going to a market this weekend and you estimate that you might make a thousand pounds in sales. If you don't put it into zero as an invoice and which, to be fair, you shouldn't really, if it's just an estimate, um, then zero doesn't know about it. Uh, it also, it gives you either a seven or 30 day forecast there are carrier software uh, apps that can plug into zero and take out all the information that you've put into zero and give you their own forecast information and some of these will go three months or a year sometimes longer the the long it's a forecast the it's just like the weather the longer in advance you try to forecast it the less sure you can be um it's always, it's the sales. So your bills, you know, you're going to have your overheads. A lot of those are going to be more or less determinable. Um, but your sales are the thing that gets really hard to predict. Uh, anyway, so let us have a look at um, what zero has. So to get to cash flow forecast, you click on business up here at the top and then short term cash flow. Uh, zero does also have more functions in its cash flow available for extra as an add on. You pay extra on your subscription for it. But this is what it has for now. So let's make this 30 days to get a better picture. And we can see that 
it has our current bank balance and then says, okay, we, um, this will probably be easier if we have a look at the invoices first. Okay. So here are our invoices, our sales sorted by due date. So we've got, um, several that are overdue. Uh, the second, so I've got this one that's due on the seventh for 125 pounds. And if we have a look at the bills to pay sorted by due date, and we look past today, we've got a bill due out for four pounds on the seventh and 150 on the 11th and hundred on the 19th. So now if we go back to the cash flow forecast for the next 30 days, we can see all of those figures. So here on the 7th, we see the increase of 125 pounds because that's zero is predicting that will be paid on the due day of that invoice. And we also see the decrease of four pounds that we're paying that bill to Google on the due date. And then here on the 11th, we see the decrease of 150 pounds for that bill going out. And here on the 19th, we see the decrease of 100 pounds for that bill going out. And another 25 pounds going out on the 1st of December. So it's, that's gonna be the, um, Okay, so we'll go back and, and see it here. The bills to pay under repeating bills. We see all of the repeating bills that I've put in. So we've got our business insurance, our storage unit, our Google and our Canva. And the business insurance is 25 pounds on the first of the month. The storage unit is 150 pounds on the first of the month. So it's picked up. Let's go back. It's picked up one of those, but not both. So this is not perfect and you can't rely on it a hundred percent, but it'll give you a good idea. Um, Right. So what it, so that's what it's done. It's added the in sales invoices that were due. It's subtracted the bills that we have due out. It's told us at the end of this 30 days, we should have 1,854 pounds in our bank account. And it's shown us where it is as we go along through the month. So if at any point through the month, this were to dip below zero or some other point that makes you nervous, maybe a hundred pounds, whatever it might be, then this, this graph gives you that alert to say, you're going to need to put some money into the business somehow from somewhere. So it, it's a good way to see if, if you're going to go negative, the vast majority of businesses fail because of cash flow problems. That's why the cash flow forecast is so um, important. When you start, when in businesses, you can have so many bills that you just can't keep track of them in your head anymore. So that's why you enter them all into zero, at least weekly. And then it will, or whatever software you care to use, and then it will be able to tell you this right here, how, how it's going to look as the days go by. You don't have to sit there in your head and work out or on a piece of paper or anything and work out, oh, okay, well, this one's not due to the 15th and this one's due on the 11th. Just make the computer do the work. Um, we have a daily breakdown here. So this is giving us to us by day or by week. We can see a summary view or table view. Um, okay, so group by week, we're looking at this week, we can see our two invoices and our one bill under table view. Under summary, we get this slightly easier to look at that we can see our invoices are due in. So that's our customer sales, our bills to pay out, 
and then the projected bank balance at the end of the week. Uh, if we looked at it by day, we could see it for each individual day. Um, and then it group by invoices and bills gives us all of our invoice, our sales due in and our bills due out. Yeah, okay. When we even get helpful suggested actions. So all of those invoices and bills that I skipped past when I was showing you, uh, Zero has noticed that these are overdue and we should pay them and we should uh, get payment for these. Uh, another thing you can do in Zero is to add expected payment dates for your customer invoices and planned payment days for your purchases bills. So if you wanted to do that, it's taken us to our customer invoices that are awaiting payment. So if I, uh, I think I clicked on the wrong thing, add date, there we go. Um, so if we expect that on the 4th of November and we hit save and let's this one for the 5th of November and we'll just do one more um, for the 6th of November right okay now if we go back to our cash flow and scroll back down here to the bottom and we'll just do that for a few of the bills as well so if we're planning on paying for this um, hotel, 7th of November, and this one on the 8th, and this one on the 9th, okay? Now, if we go back into the cash flow, you'll see that it's changed entirely. So where it was at 2000 something a minute ago for our projected balance at the end of the month, the 30 days that we're looking at. Now, because we've given it um, due dates, dates in the future that we expect payment for those invoices that haven't yet been paid, it's jumped right up to account for those sales. It's also increased our bills to pay based on those dates that we just entered as well. So... Uh, da, 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 da. If we look week by week, we can see there's sales coming in, there's sales coming in from Spooky Treats, there's the hotel going out now. All of this is wasn't here a minute ago. So that's what expected unplanned payment dates do for you on the cash flow forecast. You can use that the other way as well. If you're going to pay the bill sooner than the due date, you can put it in as a planned date, and then it will be accounted for in the right place on the cash flow forecast. Or if your customer usually pays within a week, for example, even though you give them 30 day terms, you could put it in as a planned date, um, expected date, and then it will show up. You'll get that jump up. Uh, take care with that. Don't count your chickens before they hatch. Right. What is next? Tracking categories. Okay, so this is another way to break down your sales or and your expenses. This, this is uh, really powerful and really useful, and most of most accounting software has something that does this. Zero calls it tracking categories. Sage calls it projects. Um, Quick File calls it projects. Uh, I think QuickBooks also calls it projects. Um, but yeah, so to create... Okay. To 
To create tracking categories, you first go to Accounting and then to Advanced, and then you can click on Tracking Categories. Now you'll see these stars. I'm just going to digress for a minute. Whenever you come to a menu like this, you'll see these stars, and some of them are filled in and some are not. The, star, the ones that are filled in are the ones that you see in the drop-down menu. So under Accounting, we've got Find and Recode Manual Journals and Fixed Assets, which are down here, and Chart of Accounts over here. Uh, we don't have tracking categories here because it's not start. So I'm going to start it. If you don't use it, then leave it off. And so we don't... Um, you're not using manual journals, so you can unstar it, and then it, it comes off of the menu. So it, it just uh, it helps you find things a little faster and the things that you're interested in. So the tracking categories, we come here, and when you do, there'll be nothing here, and you'll um, you can name your tracking category, and you can put in your options. You can have two up to two tracking categories active at any time in zero you can only have up to so if you're not using one you can archive it um, but you can only have up to four tracking categories ever in zero so you can have two that are archived and two that are active so take care when you're creating them to make sure that the categories that you come up with will serve you well for the long term. Each one of these can have up to a hundred what they're calling options here. So I'm going to cancel this and show you the markets that I created. So here what Silas wants to know is how his sales and expenses did at each of the individual markets that he went to. So we've created a tracking category named markets and we've listed the different markets that he's gone to. Uh, you can rename by clicking here. You can delete by clicking the little X. You can add another one by clicking here, typing, and then you have to scroll the window down and hit save. Um, and you just type it in. Um, so he can have up to 100 markets in this category. If he wants more markets, he can make markets too and just track them over there. Um, or he can use a, a, an add-on. So one of Zero's strengths is the way that it plugs into a lot of different software and it has a lot of add-ons that are available. So if Zero doesn't do a thing already, um, then you're very you're quite likely to be able to find a way to find somebody who's built something that will do it for you. They all do have extra cost involved, so just bear that in mind. Um, but yeah, if, if 100 markets will do you, then this is a good way to track them. So we've got the markets here. Um, then, I lost the plot. Okay, so you've created them, and then you need to add them to your invoices. So you go to your sales invoices. So we have market sales here for your, um, we'll just enter a new invoice, hold on. And I'll show you, it'll be easier that way. Um, so let's say on the 25th. Okay. On the 25th of October, we went to Edinburgh and we sold pumpkins and we sold 149 at uh, market sales, three pounds 50. Okay, so now we have this extra column that's appeared because we created the tracking category called markets. So it says markets at the top. This wasn't here last week when we were entering invoices. And you can click on the drop down arrow and you can select Edinburgh 
or if you tap over to it, you can just start typing Edinburgh. Okay. And when we went to, so there's tracking categories and projects are most useful for figuring out the profit of a thing given both sales and expenses. So when we went to Edinburgh, we had to stay in a hotel. So let's enter that. We've got bills to pay, business, bills to pay, new bill. So you should actually enter the contact name as whoever you stayed with. So Travelodge or Premier Inn or what have you. Um, I, this is a sample account. So, and that was the 25th that we went to the market. So it was the 24th of October that we needed to stay in the hotel the night before we drove back home that night. Uh, this was Edinburgh and it was 7425. So this was accommodation at 24 October. 25 and this is under travel and this was for Edinburgh so in order to get what we want out of the tracking categories we have to make sure to remember to put in the Edinburgh there the market everywhere we need it to be okay right um Maybe we had some fuel expense also. So we might just do um, Okay, so it's 233 miles. Go to Edinburgh, 233 miles. Um, sorry, each way. Usually you should put your total in first because you know it, but if you're using this as a calculator, be sure to put it in afterwards like that. Okay, so you've got some fuel there. Um, you can do this as travel. You can do this as asylum. You can do this as expenses. Uh, whatever contact name makes sense to you. Hit approve. Okay, so now that we've got some expenses attached to tracking categories, let's see how our profits did for each market with one great big caveat. Um, let's look at that profit and loss again. And we'll expand this and now we can compare markets. Okay, so this is giving us each market as its own column. So if you do get up to 100, this could be very cumbersome and you'll probably want to export it as a spreadsheet to really see it. But yes, we have the current financial year to today for each market. We have sales and purchases and overheads just as before so Edinburgh the one we were just dealing with we made we had 521 pounds of sales but we had 283 pounds of expenses of overheads so it looks like we made a profit of 237 pounds um, However, we haven't, we don't have any purchases costs in here. So you have to bear in mind, uh, you either have to bear in mind 
what the purchase cost would be, how much those pumpkins cost when we bought them, or you have to do some manual journals to um, show that. We'll do that now. So um, to do manual journals, it was down here. I just took it off. So go to accounting and click advanced. Uh, those pumpkin, uh, first I need to get the amount that we sold. So the Edinburgh sales were 149 pumpkins. And if you recall, we paid a pound per pumpkin, I think when we bought them, pumpkins are us, yes, a pound. Okay, so if we go to accounting and then advanced and we go into manual journals, uh, da, 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 da. Um, Edinburgh market sales by location. purchases. Yeah, that'll be better. Okay, I will do this for the date that we sold them. Okay, so what we're doing is we are taking them out of the... Um, we're not actually... We're marking them for Edinburgh, where before they were just marked as unassigned. So they're in the purchases account and they're gonna stay there. And they're unassigned in market, so you leave that part blank. Um, expenses decrease. We usually put the debit first. So we'll we'll ink we'll put the Edinburgh here. Our debit goes to, uh, so it was 149 pumpkins at a pound each, so it's 149. And there, okay. So the credit is taking them, is decreasing this expense account, this purchases, but it it's then increasing it again, the same account by the same amount, uh, but now it's labeling them as Edinburgh. Okay. This is a bit advanced and I would really recommend that you hire a bookkeeper if you get to the point of wanting to do it this way. But I just wanted to show you what it is. So that's a manual journal. And now let's go back to the profit and loss and see what's happened. Um, compare markets. We'll minimize that. Okay, so now Edinburgh has the sales and the cost of those pumpkins to buy them and the lodging and the fuel. So we can see that we made 88 pounds from going to Edinburgh, 88.55 um, before tax. We can use that information to decide whether we think it might be worth going back to Edinburgh, but we'll want to compare it to the other markets. So in Glossop, we sold 1,340 pounds worth and we had no overheads. Uh, we didn't have to stay anywhere. We didn't have to uh, travel because this is where we live. So, um, but again, there are no pumpkin costs here. So we'll need to calculate that and we can do the same thing again, um, but just 
So that's 383 pumpkins that we sold. So this is a little less than a thousand pounds. So Glossop was really profitable for our pumpkin sales in contrast to Edinburgh. But maybe we had a really nice time at Edinburgh and the fact that we made a profit was just len yap. Um, so then you can go through each of the individual markets and you can see how it how each has done. And then at the, the second to last column here, uh, so you see Manchester, we didn't actually do anything in. We created it as a market in our tracking categories, but we didn't actually use it. We ended up not going. We can shrink the width of this slightly by going back to the tracking categories page and deleting this if we want, if we're not going to go back. Um, the last column here is everything, every expense that wasn't assigned to a market. So this is the, um, all of the wholesale sales because they weren't actually market sales. Some of the market sales didn't get assigned. We can click on the number to find out which ones. Okay, so here we can see that we missed these. These are all cash sales uh, through the market. And so we need to put in the, the tracking category for those. We need to tell zero which market those were for. Um, almost none of the purchases are assigned to the different markets. Um, the insurance, the software, the rent, None of these are for any particular market, so they're just over here in the unassigned category correctly. The subsistence, however, should be for one market in particular. So we should go in and, and assign that. So let's uh, click on that and it will take us and show us that that's for that Greg's. We can click on that line there and then we can edit. And then we can type in which market it was for. So we'll say that was for York. Okay. Uh, sorry, lost the plot again. Okay. Coming back here to compare markets. Okay. So that's the overheads. And then the very last column is just our entire business as a whole. So all of our sales and all of our purchases and all of our um, overheads and then our profit after tax. Well, it's before tax right now, but our profit, the bottom line for the whole business. Okay, so that is how you use tracking categories. So it what it's so what I, I want to emphasize here is that there's these different ways to break out your um, sales and the um, so market sales, wholesale sales, online sales is one way making the different accounts, and then using the tracking categories can. The, the most the most useful thing about the tracking categories is this ability to look at them in a profit and loss report so that you can actually see the expenses together with the sales for a given, um, it could be a market. You might prefer to do market sales and online sales and wholesale sales as tracking categories. And then you can see it more easily as it's, it's where you can, so tracking category, you want to use it for something where you can relate the um, income and the expenses to that category. You won't relate all of your income and expenses to, or certainly not all of your expenses to whatever categories you come up with, because there will be the overheads like rent and insurance and so forth that are just 
there because you're running a business and it doesn't have anything to do with whether that sale is made online or in a market or at this market or that market or what have you. Um, that's how you can use tracking categories and, and what good they're for. Uh, if you're, yeah, so if you export this to Google Sheets, and so a second way of dealing with the purchases cost, the cost of the pumpkins the asylum bought, is to export it to Excel or to Google Sheets and then just to enter in uh, whatever the amount should be. So if you can easily work that out, cer certainly. So the, um, you know, Asylum sold pumpkins for 350 at markets and he bought them for a pound. So each, so you divide this by 350 and, and that's what you get for the purchases cost. So you can do that, um, which is a bit safer than entering in manual journals if you don't want to do that. Um, right, so let's see where we're at. Okay. Right, so in a nutshell, check your reports weekly to keep on top of your finances. Check your profit and loss report, check your cash flow forecast, and if you're using them, check your tracking categories, profit and loss. Um, the reports are only as good as the information that Zero knows. So this is why you need to enter your bookkeeping, enter your invoices, enter your bills, enter your payments made. So I didn't, I hadn't entered all those payments that were probably already made um, from before. So then Zero had the wrong idea of what my uh, cash uh, balance would be in the bank after seven days or 30 days or what have you. So you, you, Zero can only tell you what it knows. Um, the profit and loss report shows your profit or your loss after all the expenses are accounted for. So this is a much more useful report than just knowing how much your gross sales were. Uh, your cash flow forecast alerts you to any cash issues so you can make plans. So this is if you... Um, if you see the balance is going to go negative or is going to get very close to zero, maybe so over the over the year you might know that you have a seasonal business. You probably do as a maker or artist, and you probably make most of your sales in October, November, and many in December. And you have a drier month in January and February, and so maybe the sales will pull you through, the, the sales in the last quarter will pull you through quarter one and quarter two, but by the time you get to September, maybe you're not going to have enough cash to cover your overheads. So then you can get a bank loan that will just cover you for September's bills. And if you're able to approach the bank in advance, and it, it is it's just very much calmer situation then suddenly looking at your bank account and saying, oh, wait, no, I've got a bill going out. I've got stuff going out this week, and then I'm going to be overdrawn. And then remembering you don't actually have overdrawn credit at your at that bank account, which gives you even more issues. So the cash flow forecast is, uh, yeah, these are your two most important uh, reports, and the cash flow forecast will help keep you solvent. Get really familiar with these and check them all the time. Uh, tracking categories are a way to further subdivide your sales and expenses and get more granular data. You can use these to um, actually see how profitable a given market was or a given um, sales channel is or uh, you can use them for all sorts of different ways, uh, different regions, different salespeople. Um, if you have, if you're selling through other people, 
Um, whatever makes sense in your business. The tracking categories don't actually show on your final accounts that will be submitted uh, to HMRC. And if you're a limited company or if you become one later, uh, then your final accounts get submitted to Companies House as well. The tracking categories don't show up on those, whereas the accounts, the market sales, the wholesale sales that are on Silem's accounts, um, those show up separately like that. Okay. Um, right. And that is all I have for you today. Thank you for sticking with it. I hope that made sense. Um, that the, as I say, the reports are universal, whatever software you use, that's how you read them. Um, this is where you can find me. I'm on all the socials except TikTok. Um, and I'm going to start this month my new group, Handmade Business UK Club Money Chat, which will be a safe space for us to discuss our um, bookkeeping questions, our, uh, our finance questions, just um, swap ideas for better suppliers or uh, ask what a KPI is and which ones you should track, which I'll also cover in a future video. Um, it's, uh, and it's just for makers, artisans, and other handmade businesses in the UK. So if you want to join, I look forward to meeting you there. Um, that's all I have. Have a fantastic week. Have a sparkling Tuesday and a, a great rest of your week.